Hello, this video is going to be about static properties and methods in object-oriented programming. We're going to start by having a recap of what properties and methods are in OOP, before having a look at some of the reasons why we might want to use what are called static properties and methods. So let's have a reminder about what properties and methods are in the first place. These are the programming constructs that allow us to represent the state and behaviour of a class of objects. There are lots of keywords that are equivalent to properties and methods. For example, attribute or field could be used or variable instead of properties and function could be used instead of method. It's important to have a distinction though between properties and methods and state and behavior because state and behavior describe the object oriented model, a sort of abstract plan of our design and properties and methods will describe the actual implementation in code. Anyway, this idea of storing the state and behavior together is called encapsulation, and that's one of the really important aspects of ob object-oriented programming. When we create a class, we define the template for all of the objects from that type, and that includes defining which variables each object will have a different copy of. These variables, these properties, can be accessed through a reference to the object. So let's look at a Visual Basic .NET example. I've got a Student, very simple student class here with a name property a constructor and a getter function for that property. In submain in, in module one here, I've created two student objects from that class with different names and I've got some code to find the value of that name variable. Let's just finish that off there. Now, because each of these different objects, each of these two objects have a different copy of that name variable, there's, there's two different variables, and so they can have different values. So when we run this program, <clears throat> we get two different names coming out. Now, we might have a situation where it makes sense to store information that relates to the whole class, not just the individual objects. So in that example, we had each student having a, have a different name. That's, that's information that is important for each individual object. But it might be that we want to store something that uh, is shared between objects. And this information will be stored in what's known as a static property or static variable. In VB.NET, we use the shared modifier. In other programming languages, the static modifier is sometimes used. Let's have a look at how that works. So for my example here, I want to add an ID attribute to the student. So some kind of unique identifier that could be used. The important thing about this ID is it needs to be unique so that each student has a different ID and I'm going to use a static property to keep track of the next ID that's available for each time we make a new student object. I'm going to declare that as a shared integer. Notice we can still use access modifiers here. I've got this private uh, set up here. But the new thing now is the shared modifier. What this means is that the variable next ID is shared across all instances of the student class. It's no longer the case that each object will get its own copy of this variable. So the way I'm going to use this for the example I'm, I've given is that the ID is going to be set up using this next ID variable. And I can increment the next ID each time I use it for a new object. So that's why we have it in the constructor here. An example of how I might want to use this is to generate a username for each student, which is made up of the name and the ID together. You might like to have a go at writing a function in the student class that can generate a username for a student. There we go. Here's a very simple example of how you can implement that get username function. Uh, I'm sure you could think of something more creative. So here now in submain, I've, uh, I've got some simple code to call the get username function for some different objects of the student class. You might like to predict what this program is going to output when it runs. Here we go, we get Alex0, Kevin2, and that's evidencing the fact that the ID field is incrementing each time we make a new object. Kira would have had ID1 and Kevin has got 2. So that's a quick introduction to static properties. Now let's have a think about static methods. These are quite similar to static properties, but there are some subtle differences. Similar to static properties, static methods are thinking about 
characteristics that are not specific to a particular object, except in this case it's about the behaviour, the code itself. Again, the shared modifier is going to be used here, just like with static properties. Ordinarily we would access methods through a reference to an object of a particular class, but now we're going to be using the class name. Let's go back to our example of a student class. Now suppose we want to start a new academic year and the IDs of students are going to be reset. What I might want to do is reset the value of next ID back to zero. Now it doesn't make sense for this behavior to be specific to one particular instance because it applies to all instances. It applies to this shared next ID variable. And so I'll make a static method to implement this behavior. Okay, this is a, just a very simple static method. It's using the shared modifier there, in addition to everything else that you would expect from this subroutine. Now the weirdness comes in when we want to actually call this subroutine reset ID. Down in submain, if I try and use one of my object references, reset ID does not appear in the possible list, even though it is a public method. And that's because it needs to be called through the class name student. Student.resetID is what we use here. You might notice a bit of a similarity between student.resetID and the line below it here, console.writeLine. And that's because console.writeLine is a static method. If I hold the control key and left click on console here, I can have a look at the interface for the console class that's inbuilt into the Visual Basic language. Most of this is really confusing, but you can see that pretty much all of these methods here are shared. They are static methods and properties. So if I scroll and I can find right line, we've got a public shared sub right line and many of its, all of its many overloads. Another example of where static methods might be used is when creating libraries. Here I'm creating a very simple library for vector objects and I've created an incredibly simple class called vector2d. It has two variables, integers x and y, for the two values in the two-dimensional vector. It might make sense to use static methods here to implement some of the operations on two-dimensional vectors. For example, finding the length of a vector. Notice in this function stub that I've ha I have a parameter that is of type vector2d. Even though we are declaring this function within the vector2d class, we can still take in as parameters or arguments objects of that type. The only difference here being a static fu function, a static method, is that it can only be called through the class name. It's more of a conceptual thing. I could have easily also created a function that, it, that was non-static called length or get length with the same functionality. Just as a quick test, why don't you have a go at writing the body of this function? Here we go. It's really important that we don't use x and y and instead use u.x and u.y because we don't want to access any particular non-static methods of a particular instance of the vector2d class. We only care about the values within the parameter that we've passed through. If we try to use x instead of u.x, uh, a compile time error is, is, is thrown here. Cannot refer to an instance member of a class from within a shared method. That's because shared or static methods exist independently from any state that exists for a particular object. So let's fix that again. You'll notice that I've used another static method here, the math.sqrt or square root static function. This is as part of the math library. I can find that in here along with many other shared functions that are created as part of the math class. As a second example here, I might like to create a static method for adding two vectors together. It should take as parameters references to two different vector2d objects, and it should return a reference to a vector2d object. Have a go at creating the function stub first. Alright, there's my function stub. And now I'm going to implement the body of the function, which should also be very simple. It's important that it's going to return a new vector because we don't want to modify any of the state within the vectors that have been passed in as parameters, just in case they're needed for something else in the calling code. And there we go, there's our simple vector library. From this one vector class, we can create instances, but we can also use the static methods for operating upon those vectors. Let's have a quick play. <laughs> 
I've got two vectors defined here, a and b. Let's first find the magnitude of vector a. Remember we must use the class name to access this static method. Vector 2d dot magnitude of a. If I run this it will correctly return the square root of 5. I might like to compose these library functions together. There we go, so first adding together the vectors a and b and then finding the magnitude of that. Some programmers prefer writing libraries of this kind in this way using static methods. For a recap now, let's look at some of the key differences between static and non-static properties and methods. The first is about when properties are initialized. For non-static or ordinary properties, these are initialized when each time we create a new instance of a class. Obviously each of those objects has a different copy of those variables, and they are initialized around the time when the constructor is called. For static properties, they are initialized only once, and that is at the start of the program. The key difference for static methods is the way in which they are accessed. For ordinary methods, non-static methods, they are accessed through a reference to an object, for example, myself.getName, but static methods need to be accessed through the class name itself, for example, students.resetIDs. Thank you for watching this video about static properties and methods. I hope you found it useful.